Uh, good question. I'm a fan of uh, Sachin Tendulkar, of course, as a, as a badam. Well, you know, I grew up in in a city called Bangalore. So let me brace myself to introduce someone really special who's joining us today. So she is an all-rounder, the captain of the Germany's national cricket team, and a postdoctoral research scientist. Joining us today to discuss cricket and a lot many things is Anuradha Dudabalapur. So welcome and thanks for joining in. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So I prepared for that introduction because you have so many feathers in your caps already, but. Starting uh, with your fair break experience, firstly. So coming in from Germany, how has the heat there affected you? <laughs> Good question. I think uh, we've just come out of winter in in Germany, so the weather and the temperature here is quite um, quite a bit to to take in initially. But I guess after a few days, we've um, adapted all right. I mean, it's a bit mental to be playing at forty degrees, but. Uh, <laughs> Since yeah. our games are in the evenings, it's it's quite bearable. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's something you've got to adapt to usually to conditions wherever you travel. So it's uh, not a big surprise. But uh, cold to hot is always a, is a tough one. <laughs> Definitely. But how has that experience been for you, like playing in the fair break tournament alongside a lot of big names? And it's a big opportunity, of course, to be a part of a tournament like that of fair break. It was an anticipated tournament. People were talking about it. How has that experience been for you? Oh, incredible! Really, um, I don't know what, how best to articulate it, but the fact that coming from associate nations, you've got this opportunity or a platform to to mix with some of the biggest names in in women's cricket, and you know these are players who we look up to as role models, and to be playing alongside them or against them on on the same pitch. Uh, it's a really, really cool experience, and there's so much to learn uh, on on the field and off the field. I'm trying to pick brains from um, people, you know, who've been playing for a while and professionals. So it's a uh, it's a great learning experience so far, and I think there'll there'll be a lot to, for us to take back to to Germany or wherever we come from, and to see how we can share that knowledge with our cricket communities. So let's just start with the beginning, your cricketing journey. We'll have to trace back to Bangalore for that matter. So how did it start there in Bangalore? What was it like when you thought that you were playing cricket? So let's just first talk about cricket. We'll get to science in a bit. Uh, yeah, it takes me back to a long time ago. <laughs> um, well, you know, I grew up in in a city called Bangalore, um, which is now probably quite a big sporting hub in India. Um, but growing up with a family, you know, my my dad's a huge cricket fan. My grandfather was one too. Um, and I've had uh, I, I have an older brother and a couple of cousins in the same household, so we just play cricket in in the front yard all the time. So it was really humble beginnings, and there was a lot of cricket to watch on TV, although it was just men's cricket back in the day. So that's what really got me into cricket, and I, it was a great game to watch, and I enjoyed playing with my um, you know family or, or cousins. And I, I think it was later, sort of in high school, where one of my classmates. Um, used to play for the Karnataka state side, and in one of those conversations, said, "Hey, why don't you come and trial for for the next tournament?" So it was an under 16 event, and uh, I did go in. And so that was my introduction to hardball cricket in a more organised format. And um, yeah, I haven't really looked back since. So it's been about 20 odd, 20, 22, 23 years of playing cricket right now, and it's been an amazing journey because I think playing in Karnataka in that setup. Um, and having the likes of some former India players and captains in that group was was quite inspiring. Now, in retrospect, when I do think about it, yeah, sure. And then uh, you make that decision of going to the UK for your studies. Though, was it a conscious, like the planned decision from your family's end as well that uh, you're doing good in cricket, but then you made a choice. You probably went there for your higher studies, and then you're a scientist as well. Now, how all of that happened? Uh, good question. I, I suppose I was always interested in in academics and in biology because I knew I was one of those one of those sports person who had no issues with studies. It was just a choice to go there and get your higher studies. Yeah, I mean, I I don't see why we have to say you've got to do this or that. Like you can have both, <laughs> right? So um, there are quite a few people think... who are uh, good in academics plus sports. So you can be all rounders. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I think in high school already I kind of 
wanted to pursue a career in in biology or medicine and i knew i think at that point playing cricket in in for the state or even a level higher it didn't seem like a very viable option because i i can't remember if back in the day there were like professional contracts for state cricket as well. so i know it's only come in more recently um so it, it wasn't necessarily that you either stop playing cricket and only do this or not or the other way around um but for me the first choice was to pursue um my master degree in the uk so i did play a fair bit of cricket while doing my bachelor studies as well i was at, i have an engineering degree in um, biotechnology so when did the germany thing happen you're now the captain of the side of course you've taken the team to greater heights we'll talk about your records as well but how's that uh, journey from the uk to germany happened to you uh again solely for academics i think the move to germany was um um prominently for um pursuing my phd um i, I don't think it was um a conscious effort to get into cricket after i moved I, i don't think i even like researched or checked on it before i moved there um and you know frankfurt i i live in frankfurt currently um i've been there for the last 12 years and um it was more so to to get on with with the study program and then after about a year or so i tried to look up if there was cricket in in the vicinity and uh, we only had a men's team in the club in the local club so i played there for a bit and i found out that we've got a women's national team so i contacted the manager to see if i could come in for any of the trials so that was 2013 um and that's how the journey started with the women's national team and uh in 2017 i was appointed as captain and it's been yeah five really good years of being able to work with the team and kind of um get get everyone together to to play better cricket and to kind of enjoy the sport and i think the success we've had is really um kind of testament to all the commitment that the players have because everyone's a either a professional or um kind of studying you know, university students or they're in school so all of us are amateur cricketers but playing for germany and it's a really honor um it's a real honor to be representing you know the country so i think we all appreciate that but again managing careers as well as playing sport at the highest level is quite challenging but i mean i love our group our girls i think if it wasn't for for this i probably wouldn't have stayed in germany for this long so i think cricket and academics are equally important and very like close close related for me at the moment definitely and as you mentioned about your team talk us through how is the culture of cricket in germany because of course you've been here you're from india you've been to the uk and of course germany as well so what's the, the cricket culture like there in germany and about how the team shapes up about uh, uh, quite a few players who've been doing well for the side as well it's been a nice growth to see because when i started playing in 2013 we had only about four three or four domestic sides so we've really grown by leaps and bounds i'd say and there's a fair bit of development work being done in in different clubs then um the board is kind of pushing for for current existing uh men's cricket clubs to kind of start a women's department and to support that uh change as well so it's nice to see the growth of growth of the game happening currently and many of us are involved in in those roles as administrators as coaches uh so a lot of the national players apart from just playing quality cricket for the country are really doing heaps of efforts to to grow the game and that's kind of quite endearing to see and i think in terms of uh, some of the prominent names um we've got Steffi uh, Stephanie from Maya who's the former captain of Germany and she's done like heaps of work to to bring the team to to where we are today uh we've got Christina Goff who's our vice captain she was also playing at the fair break event um and uh, some of our i think top performers in the last couple of years have been Janet who's our opener um it's quite a cheeky one but you know getting huge runs on the board um really good cricketer we've got Bianca uh bowling wise we've got quite some youngsters so there's Tony who comes from the northern part of Germany there's Emma who's uh, another young rising star so it's it's a great mix of people and also quite a diverse um bunch of people coming together to to play the sport so some of us um coming or growing up in cricketing countries and you know move to germany you know we call germany home now so we've got a few of those in the team a majority of them are native germans who picked up 
the sport in the country and i think that's a great example for younger girls to see and to be inspired by by the group of people who are playing cricket for the for the country now yeah let's get to your personal milestone there four wickets in four balls a world record what what was the feeling like like after that uh, did you know that it was a world record when actually you were playing that match or you got to know it afterwards and how was the things that uh, followed after that uh yeah it's quite surreal i mean even now to if they've got a world record your name um not to be honest during the game I had no idea cuz we were just getting on with with the overs and i think for me it was more about who am i bringing on for for bowling the next over so so it was only at the end of the game that uh we got to know uh, i i believe the commentators they uh, mentioned that during the game um but you know i caught it much much later on and later in the evening once we uh got back to the dressing rooms and you know had messages from people over so um it was kind of um it took a while to sink in <laughs> i think we had a couple of other games um post that that I, i think it was the fourth t20 if i'm not wrong so we had one more game to go the next day um but i think it was a flood of um i think media presence and um a bit of attention uh, which i wasn't used and to and uh, and a tweet in kannada uh, from the germany uh... <laughs> you to handle as well <laughs> yeah i've thought i've thought our girls a couple of kannada words and you know we've kind of exchanged things like that so uh, that was quite funny to see <laughs> they caught caught the attention of it so so really i mean, it was it, it kind of followed it was followed by a fair bit of um interviews and and media attention and it's been great cuz you know that's given us a bit of lobbying in the german sporting um sector as well so uh for the longest time we i don't think we had much of a pull there but you know having to do interviews with the local news channel or having um that uh, piece of information um coming out in newspapers in in germany it was nice to see and i think at least sparked a little bit more interest with with uh, the the german lot in terms of oh, you know this the game um I, i'm sure they know about it but uh, i think stuff like these always are nice to kind of highlight that the team's doing well or there are uh, better performers coming through through the pathway so i think it has helped us in in pushing the game um or kind of promoting the game uh, a little bit better in germany and i'm quite pleased with that yeah definitely so growing up did you have any cricketing idol someone you looked up to a couple of them uh, although in male cricket <laughs> i don't think we got to watch much much of women's cricket on tv so i was a huge fan of uh, sachin tendulkar of course as a the batter um and alan donald used to be my favorite uh, bowler uh, the south african medium pacer and i think a bit later on it was brett lee because he was just charging and you know rattling the the lineups of so many um uh, top order uh, for most teams so Yeah, looking back I think those were my uh, role models growing up as as a teenager. So now that you've been uh, in cricket for a long time, so what is that one message that you would give to the budding cricketer, someone who's trying to, you know, make it to the great level? Of course there are a lot of hurdles, there are a lot of challenges and you need to keep going. So one message that you would like to give to the budding cricketers? Uh I'd say enjoy enjoy playing the sport because as we said there's a lot of highs and lows and i think sometimes it's important to kind of think of why why do you play the sport and and do you actually uh, enjoy doing all of that training and you know fitness all of it so it's, it's quite a holistic sport if you if you think of it that way um so it's a lot of hard work that goes in but most important is to kind of enjoy being there and to, to kind of soak it in be in the present um but yeah otherwise it's you know it's It's an awesome sport um and I I actually hope and wish that more people take it up especially youngsters because for example in Germany we do compete with with a football or hockey or basketball so it it's quite a tough challenge to uh, to promote the sport and to kind of inspire more younger girls and boys to take it up so um if I could go back in time uh, 20 years back and you know you always kind of think of you know what's the reason you took up the sport and how can you make it exciting for for more people to to kind of get into it um so i think enjoyment is is key and and to keep that alive does take some work uh, after many years playing it so i think that would be the key message really definitely so that was a lovely conversation thank you for joining in and we wish you all the best for all that's in store for you 
Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate your time. <laughs>